Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. This is our extended analysis video where we're just looking at the forecast section and just wanted to look at our marking schedule just to recap what we were do doing. So to start off with, we needed the table and we've already got that in the earlier section and we need to make um, some forecasts. So that's just the achieved forecasts. I'm going to write times two. I'm going to make two just to be sure. Um, the next part is they must be communicated in context and rounded appropriately. So we need to include context and round appropriately. We then need to discuss the accuracy and our reliability of the forecast. Discuss accuracy of forecast. And then below that, we need to s explicitly state that the forecasts are estimates. So forecasts equal estimates so it's a relatively short section um, but it is an important one and there's a lot of little tricks and easy ways to get merit marks in this example so let's get into our forecast so first thing we need to do is we should probably be looking to copy and paste our table down and in that table you should be looking to make two predictions and you're basically picking the dates at random so i'm going to pick december 2000 and seven and then maybe i'll pick june 2008 so these are the forecasts that i want to make so let's start off with the first one so i've given it a heading so um let's have a look at december so it's between 573.23 and 1192 and our exact prediction 844.06 so Based on my model, I would predict the number of penguin in the colony would be, so we got 844.06, we're going to round that down. So you can't have part of a penguin, so that's part of that rounding appropriately. Okay, and then I'm going to say rounded to nearest whole number so that's the first step and i also used context because i am referring to the number of penguins and the colony um, so i'm happy with that and then we need to go on and extend well that's the exact prediction what would we be 95 percent confident in and that would be the values either side of it we would be 95 percent confident that the prediction for December 2007 would be between 573, so again I'm rounding that down to the nearest penguin, and 119, both rounded to nearest whole number. Okay, so that there is the prediction of the forecast for December 2017. So we state the exact forecast, and then we state the range as well. So let's do the June forecast. So same thing based on my model. I would predict the number of penguins in the colony would be. Let's see what our prediction would be. So we're predicting 114.74. We're going to round that up. Again, oh, we should write, state our context because they are in penguins. Rounded to nearest whole numbers. Okay, we would be 95% confident. So same as above that the prediction for June 2008 would be between. And I should change that in the one above. Just realize that mistake. So what are they between? So that's ne a negative number, which is really weird. So negative 229 and 435. And again, both rounded to nearest whole number. So that's the, the forecast of itself. So that would have been the achieved criteria. And just noting during that, we did round appropriately, which was one of the merit things. And we did use our context 
um, as well. So let's delete those. We then need to discuss the accuracy of the forecasts and kind of our confidence in them. So if you think about the range of the numbers um, between 573 and 919, that is a huge, huge range. And within that range, our prediction was 844. So given there was a range of, was that well over 500 penguins, the probability of your 844 penguin prediction being correct is going to be so, so tiny. That's so tiny because that range is so big, I cannot be confident with this prediction. So below that, with respect to the December 2007 prediction, I am not confident in my estimate. Our 95% confidence interval spans between 573 and 119. So 1119. So our confidence interval spans between those two numbers, which suggests that the likelihood of there being 844 penguins is extremely remote. So I think that's a fairly good summary. That's basically saying that span, it's just so big, we can't be confident in that prediction. Okay, let's then have a look at the June forecast. Um, are we confident with this one? Again, it's got a very big range, um, well over 600. And for me, the other thing that doesn't give me confidence is it's such a big range, it spans into negative numbers, and you can't have a negative penguin. That's outrageous. So there's a whole lot of issues that I've got with this June forecast. So we're going to start off with a similar discussion. Um, the range is so big, the likelihood of us being right is just remote, too, too unlikely to occur. And then we need to chat about this negative forecast and why that's just even casts more doubt on it because you can't have negative penguins. So, um, with respect to the June 2008 prediction, I am not confident. Just realized I had a bit of a typo here. Not confident in my estimate. Our 95% confidence. So, using very similar wording to the above interval spans between negative 229 and 435 penguins and I should update this one here because that's what those numbers represent penguins which suggests that the likelihood of there being how many did we predict for that one. That one was, where is it? 115 penguins is extremely remote. In addition to this, this is where I'm going to chat about the negative penguins. Um, the confidence interval includes predictions between negative 229 and zero penguins, which is practically impossible because you cannot have part of, or you cannot have negative penguins. There you go. So I'm happy with that. Um, so I've chatted about my forecasts and I've then mentioned the width of these just to tell me that oh it's just so unlikely to occur so I'm, I wouldn't be happy with that um, so I've discussed the the next step is you'd want to discuss the accuracy of these forecasts and the last step that I want to mention it's just the saving grace um, if you have a look at the seasonal effects graph that's really really consistent and the same with the long-term trend um, so those two would normally give us confidence. 
and then so despite the very all right extremely consistent seasonal oh actually let's start again so our model comprises of two elements the long-term trend long-term trend and the seasonal effect in our model these are both very consistent which should give us confidence however this is not sufficient to overcome issues with the width of our confidence intervals as discussed above okay and i think that wraps up my forecast section so i've done my forecast i've referred it back to the width of the confidence interval to check if i'm likely is that prediction likely to occur i've done the same for june um for june i've chatted about the width again and i've also chatted about the negative penguins and finally i've just mentioned the long-term trend and the seasonal effect if they're really consistent that normally gives us a bit more confidence with our predictions um, which i've mentioned but that wasn't sufficient to overcome the issues with the width of our confidence intervals so hopefully this video was shorter but hopefully you found it was useful that was wrapping up the forecast section so a lot of easy merit stuff to come out of that part um, and the good thing is you don't really need to include your research side of things. You don't not really looking to back up those points. But obviously, if you wanted to get into this merit stuff over here, um, some of that of the excellent stuff, you'd need to integrate their research, or you'd need to research some of these points. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. I'll stop the video, and then we're going to move on to the final video that's going to look at the conclusion section to a merit level. Thanks, guys.